Sparring, but I just can't. Oh, there's something different about you, Vegeta. I can't quite put my finger up. <laughs> Who am I kidding? It's your hair. <laughs> your hair's so lame. Oh, did Bulma make you cut it short again? Man, she's really got you whipped, huh? She can be a real handful, can't she? Oh, sorry. I know how mad you get when people tease your Bulma. <laughs> hey, listen. Krillin and I have been secretly gathering the Dragon Ball and we can save you a wish. Though that old school hairdo really is in these days, eh, buddy? <laughs> but seriously, if you want people to stop messing your hair up, maybe we can wish for hair immortality or something so that this never happens again. Well, no way to find out but to find out. What do you say, eh? I'll take that as a yes. Be right back. Gonna go make you hair immortal. Just in case hair immortality is not really a thing, let's see if we can recreate a nice wig truly worthy of a prince. Starting with a really cheap, crappy, ugly wig from a Halloween store. This thing goes for about 15 bucks on eBay, and wow, yeah, it definitely shows. But hey, it's officially licensed. It's got a tag by Funimation and everything, and look at that flop. Whew. Yeah, if you wanted a Vegeta wig that could flop in the wind, this is the wig for you. Uh, last time I checked, I think Vegeta's hair was supposed to have a bit more form. Oh, and the sideburns. Oh, this wig would have a better career on the Vegas Strip as an Elvis impersonator, that's for sure. It's just a downright disappointment in every angle I could find. Let's put the thing on and see how it feels. I mean, you guys know me. I'm an artist. I've drawn Vegeta a few times in my career, and I, th I tend to think I know what Vegeta's hair would look like, right? It's uh, spiky stalks and uh, whatever this is just does not not pass for that classy princely Vegeta appeal that we're looking for. But let's see what the ladies think. Hey, how's it going? You ever been with a tall floppy haired prince before? <laughs> the carpet does mesh. Okay, whatever. You don't even care. <sighs> Styrofoam head girls these days don't know what they really want in life. So in this cosplay DIY tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take that cheap $15 Halloween Vegeta wig and transform it into a Super Saiyan wig. Not really a Super Saiyan transformed wig, but more of a, a super wig that is worthy of a Super Saiyan. You know what I'm saying? Okay, as you saw, before we get down to business, I took the tag off and those cheesy sideburns. Ugh. Fun fact, these anime style Halloween wigs are covered in cheap craft glue that they put on in the factory to kind of simulate that upward vertical lift that most anime characters have, so take a fine tooth comb and some goo be gone and just comb all that crappy crud out of the wig. We're going to be completely restyling this and making a Vegeta wig that is truly worthy of the best kind of cosplay. Make sure that all that craft glue from the factory is completely removed so it'll make a mess free process as we add our own glue or gel. I even used a fine tooth de-shedding comb from my pet <laughs> to get rid of all this stuff. Then just dunk it overnight in some detergent to make sure it's clean before you work on it. Or if you're impatient like most of the rest of us, just use a hair dryer after a few hours soak. By the way, you can get these styrofoam heads at Michael's for like $5. As you can see, I made a boo-boo and got the female one because they were out of the male ones. So later on in the video, I go back and get a male size one so it'll fit on the wig a little better. But for now, just use some pins to make sure that thing is fastened on the front, sides, and back. I'm using Schwarzkopf. Got to be ultra glue, gel, and hairspray for the whole forming of the wig stalks. So if you can find some of this for like five bucks at your local store, it is a great product for every wig shape that you can imagine. Pretty much anyone, even people who don't know anime, know what Vegeta's hair looks like. He's one of the most iconic characters of all time. And as you can tell, it starts as these weird oblong, like stretched out triangles that get curvy near the bottom and then sharp at the end at the tip. So you're gonna wanna become very familiar with the shape of each one of these stalks that you see protruding from his skull, because we're going to try and replicate those shapes as we form this wig out of this big old mess of floppy hair. Make sure you have a pair of sturdy scissors handy because this part's gonna take a while. So each one of these stalks I kind of start curved near the base and then as I reach the tip I get sharper and sharper and then I just kept trimming off all that excess hair that this wig just happened to come with. You don't really need that much hair to create a very effective looking Vegeta wig. I don't know why the people at the factory thought you needed a giant afro of just wavy hair all over the place to look like the one true Saiyan Prince. No, you really don't. You honestly just need about seven or eight inches of hair to 
start with around the temple and then as you go back to the crown of the hair, it gets thicker and longer, sure. But for starters, these first few stalks are gonna be relatively short. This process actually took me the longest. It was anywhere between four to five hours. Uh, so take your time and make sure that each stalk has that gentle curve to it. It's nice and pointy on the tip. So trim away all that excess and just make sure that each one of those stalks that form around his hairline are basically like gentle horns, if that makes sense. And every time you're comfortable with what looks like a good stalk, you take a little bit of the gel and you just work it in there and make it nice and sturdy so that it keeps its shape. You don't need a lot of gel to start. You just need enough to keep the shape of the stalk that you just finished. And as you move back towards the vertex of hair, you'll get to what I think is the most challenging stalk of it all. The big old chunky one that's right in the middle of his head. So what I did is I just grabbed a big old chunk, like a few of the stalks that the original Halloween wig came with and formed them together in the middle. And as long as you're trimming to that sharp tip at the very top and keeping that gentle curve near the bottom, you'll start to see that big old stalk of hair kind of come together and take shape. And when you make those cuts to create that sharp tip, make sure that you take really extreme angles that follow the flow of the hair. Don't cut at an angle that's more parallel with the ground, if that makes sense, because the angle that leads to the tip of each stalk is very sharp and nearly perpendicular with the floor. You may notice that I have hot glue gun nearby. That's just for connecting the stalks at the very root to make sure the whole wig stays together. You may not need that, but I have it just in case. Now, after you've finished forming the big stalks and the side stalks, it's time to move to the messier bottom ones that are behind the head. It's okay to keep this kind of messy because that kind of works out for Vegeta. His hair is not perfect in the back, but if you wanted to give it a better form, go right ahead. Create more stalks that are just like the front and side ones, but a little smaller as you go down. You may notice I've kind of developed a weird pro move here for shaping the wig stalks in the back. Don't be afraid to pick up the whole styrofoam head and just hold it up and use gravity to kind of lead where your cuts go. And before you know it, you'll have a whole box full of hair that almost fills the original Halloween box up. Look at that. Oh, that is nasty. Oh yeah, get a good look at that. We basically chopped half this wig off and we're gonna throw it away, my gosh. As you can see, that method of holding the styrofoam head in its entirety fully upside down has kind of developed into a blow drying method as well to create more of a vertical lift with the hot air pushing upwards while downwards because it's upside down and you see what I'm saying. I actually went further and created a whole microphone stand boom arm support to hold the entire styrofoam head and wig upside down as I added more gel to it to create that vertical lift. This part as well as a lot of the parts after this are totally optional. You could keep the Vegeta wig as it is with just the simple stalks formed with some gel and just wear it to cons. But I'm gonna go a little further, go those few extra miles and really make this thing stand out amongst the sea of endless Vegeta wig attempts. After all, many lifelong Dragon Ball fans out there are dying to see the perfect Vegeta wig formed out of a normal wig, you know? The super cheap, cost-effective way of donning that iconic hairstyle. And we're gonna take our shot at that to try and please all those Vegeta fans out there, but we're gonna try and do a little better, can we? All right, cause it would be so easy to just simply call it good right now, but we're going to attempt to really give this thing the style worthy of a Saiyan Prince. So let's give it a shot and see what we can do with this thing, shall we? Ah, wish me luck. Oh, this is my first time messing with a wig like this. Ugh, so nervous. At this point, we're just kind of fine tuning each and every stalk that we've got, just forming more complete, more cohesive stalks that form out that Vegeta shape. And as I was creating this, I wanted to leave a little Easter egg in there for the true Vegeta fans, the OG Vegeta fans. You know what I'm saying. So do you remember that first time? Harken back to the days where he landed on Earth and faced Goku for the first time, Kakarot. And he looked at him from up top that cliffside as Goku looked from the other side of that cliff and they stared at each other over these canyon rock towers. Did you notice that his hair was kind of flowing to the side in the canyon winds as they blew across his face, looking fearless and ready to battle his Saiyan counterpart? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm trying to recreate that whole wafting motion, that slightly windswept look that his hair is kind of just caressed by the wind from the side. So as you can see, the wig kind of just took that angle and is kind of windswept as well because you know all those most iconic Vegeta scenes as he's about to face down all his nemesis, nemesi, 
I don't, Nemesis is. <laughs> As he's about to face down all his enemies, he sees, he sees them from across the battlefield and there's a big old gust of wind that hits him upside the head. And he just, his hair just looks so damn good. So I'm gonna try and recreate that whole effect. Yeah, I know I just stacked a whole nother load of work on top of this already challenging workload as it is, but we're gonna do it. Let's give it a shot. Fearless, we're going into this just like Vegeta, fearless and ready to overcome. So as each and every one of these stars is kind of getting fine-tuned from gentle curve at the base to the sharp abrupt tip at the end. I just wanted to make sure that each one will be held, especially during the hot, busy summer months of the con season. You don't want your cosplay to fall apart and start melting, so you're gonna wanna make sure that gel holds strong. Not only am I infusing the whole thing with a big old slop of gel into each stalk, I'm making sure that each stalk will hold true and stay close to its neighbors by spraying that freeze hold hairspray into every every corner, tip, and edge to make sure the whole thing is sturdy. And I'm also solidifying the angle of each and every one of these stalks with the hairdryer going upward, blowing on upward so that hot air will bring every little piece of hair upward and where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Noise. If you're going the extra mile like me to create that windswept look, make sure that you spray dry spray dry and keep alternating back and forth between those two steps to create these awesome upward stalks that will hold strong and stand the test of time. And as the whole thing dries and the gel sets in and all that hairspray gets nice and sticky, go ahead and use that hairdryer a bit more to further bolster that upward effect. Now that we've given that thing a 360 and seen her from every angle, I think we're really happy with the shape that it's becoming. Now these next few steps are completely unnecessary if you wanted to just keep the simple black Vegeta wig. But like I said, we're gonna try and wow all the Vegeta fans out there, so we're going to add some paint. Yes, it is okay to paint wigs. It's your project. Project, do whatever you want. So my first coat, I'm going through with an automotive enamel black just to give that deep, dark, glossy black finish to the majority of the wig. As you can see, I'm spraying it from every angle that I can. Every angle of attack here, underside to the side side, from the top side and the back side, we're gonna hit that thing with all this gloss black enamel and it's automotive, so it will stand any temperature on planet Earth, as long as you're not living in a volcano. Anime hair is shiny, okay? That's just how it is. And yes, we're going the extra, extra, extra mile here, and we're gonna add highlights. So I've got some metallic paints, just acrylic, typical paints you can find for like $2 at your local craft store, and some really cheap brushes. Foam brushes and normal bristle brushes should work fine for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to imagine the hair as if not only the wind was hitting it from the side, but the sun was hitting it from the side. So if you've never done highlights before on anything, just imagine a light source hitting it from one side in this case we're going for the left so about a little less than half of each stock is going to be highlighted in this case I went with the base highlight which is light blue because <laughs> yeah I'm kind of also trying to create that effect where he's mid transformation but through all of his transformations so not only will you see the Super Saiyan blue blue appear on the side with the base highlight there but you're gonna also see some metallic yellow for the typical Super Saiyan colors and then <laughs> We're also gonna show even more mad respect for all those OG Vegeta fans out there. And we're gonna add a little bit of bronze and maybe some red, we'll see. Just because, you know, originally his hair was kind of red on certain planets, yeah, it's weird. But we're, we're gonna try it. We're gonna have a whole spectrum of Vegeta transformations in his hair with these highlights. Okay, so just trust me here, we're gonna have some fun with it. If you were picturing a whole like rainbow Vegeta wig, that's a different project for a different day. Here we're just going to make some fun and interesting highlights. Now you can see the little string of yellow, the metallic yellow that I added. So um, now we're going to add some different spray paints to kind of blend it all together and make the highlights more right at home with the black, dark, deep parts of the hair. And to start, to make it look a little nicer and cleaner, I cut out a nice, like, curved, sharp edge stencil that I can use all over to different parts of the hair so each stalk can be painted individually. And I can also use the edge of that stencil just to make sure the lines are a little cleaner and that where I need to blend, it'll be blended, and where I need to have sharp edges, it'll be sharper. Here I'm doing nice, light, quick sprays that are just barely touching the hair just to give a nice blend for that highlight to look natural. 
because as you could tell with the blue by itself and the little string of yellow, it kind of looked a little weird, but as we're blending in more gold and bronze with these spray cans, the hair is starting to look more natural, like a powerful Saiyan mid-transformation hair stalk should be. And the rest of the spray can process is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to blend it in and make it look good. So after adding some gold and maybe some bronze or some red, I will go back and add more black to overcoat and make the blend look a little better. And you can see those mixed colors kind of created like a silver effect too, which I'm down with. That's cool. It makes Vegeta look a little more mature. And for the finishing touches, I will go over the entire thing with a coat of sealer to make sure the paint stays nice and true. And so it's permanent. Any can of gloss sealer will work great for this part. And before we see that final product in action, I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons out there. You guys are what counts in my artistic adventures. It's because of you I can make videos like this and enjoy being creative. So thank you so much. And a little shout out to everyone out there who's been with me since my very first cosplay video. It's been like three years, maybe four years since my last cosplay video and I'm back at it again. <laughs> Vegeta! It worked! Shenron must have granted you hair immortality! Woohoo! If you want to see more videos like this, please hit me up in the comments below. Oh, hold up. I think I think he's gonna... Yep. Yep, yeah, I thought I felt an aura blast coming on. As I was saying... If you'd like to see more content like this, more cosplay videos, more great fun projects like this, please just say hi down in the comments below and let me know, and subscribe! I know I've been doing this for a few years, but hey, I'm still relatively new to the scene. I love doing YouTube videos, so I look forward to meeting every single one of you that I can. Thanks again for watching, and hey, we're just having fun with this. I really appreciate you all. I'm Jet Falco, and I'll Let's see you in the next one. Spot.